What's up everyone, thanks for tuning in. So this is kind of a general update on tuning options available for Acuras, Hondas, you know, just you know, just for all of our tuners out there that are looking to have tuning capabilities for your Accords, Civics, Preludes, Integras, so on and so forth, you know, just from like 80s all up to like 99, 2000, early 2000s. So as, of, as I'm filming this, it's December 8th, 2020, so a couple weeks before Christmas. So hopefully this gives you guys a cool, you know, Christmas gifts ideas for yourselves possibly. So for those of you guys that don't know, Moats is no longer a company. And they were kind of one of the main sources of, you know, purchasing and getting like SST burnable chips, your chip burners, your Moats ostrich, uh, you know, live tuning, uh, your hue log, data logger and stuff like that. And uh, other stuff as well, kind of like, uh, you know, for your, your chipped ECU kits and, you know, so, so on and so forth. So they were kind of like, for a budget tuning capability company, they were like your go-to for the time being. Now, given, you know, even to now before they closed down, they were using very, very old tech. Uh, it works, I'm using it, you know, depending on what your build is, depending on what your goals are for like very mild street builds, even, you know, in turbo applications, like as long as you have an understanding in the software you're using, which in my case, Honda Tuning Suite, or if your tuner knows, you know, what they're doing, they've been, you know, given whatever tuning software. I mean, like I've seen, you know, remember there's people that have been tuning boosted cars on Chrome. How they, you know, looking at it now in comparison to where we're at now is kind of like, that's like caveman technology in my opinion. So uh, given the fact that even though it's not impossible right now to get, you know, a setup simply like that, uh, there are other options. Unfortunately, it's not going to be as budget friendly as, you know, most provided at the time. So hopefully this video will kind of help you guys uh, know some options that are available out there, even on the more budget side into a more expensive, a little bit more expensive side. But even then, uh, you'll understand when I talk about it and, you know, kind of give my two cents on it on why you are actually still kind of, you know, getting a little bit more than your money's worth. All right, let's get this started. So I'm gonna mention Hondata real quick, specifically Hondata S300. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with that product. It's a tried and proven product for many years. There's been cars that have ran sub 10 second quarter miles tuned on Hondata. There's been well-known tuners that have tuned on Hondata. Absolutely nothing wrong. All I'm gonna be trying to show you guys is just going from like your budget, mild street build, uh, and what I think you guys would, you know, would only need for mild street build cars to like your more medium, like uh, kind of uh, weekend warrior builds to full blown high horsepower race builds. So hopefully like there's nothing I'm not, this isn't like, this is better than that. This is better than this. Screw that company, screw that company. I, this nothing to do with that. Uh, I'm gonna leave you guys all links in the description to all these products for you guys to make a decision on your own and for you guys to gain more information on your own. I will say right now though, I'm the wrong person to ask about each individual product, you're better off contacting the companies to get the answers you seek. Um, even as far as installation, I have not installed any of these. I have ideas on how they might be installed, but there's other great videos that I found from some of these products on YouTube to where it does show full blown installation of them that'll help you guys out. If in the future I do plan on purchasing one of these things, I will for sure be making a how-to video onto it for them. All right, so let's get this started. Starting on, if you're still with the chipped OBD1 ECU. So here's the Snake Tuning Solutions, Snake EMU. Again, I'm not gonna go through every single one of these. I'm just gonna throw on like some key notes here. So it has Bluetooth into it, real-time data logging, uh, frame memory storage for a battery-free operation. So that's cool because if you guys that don't know, like the Moats Ostrich 2.0, now it's battery operated. And I even believe the Hulog was battery operated. Um, I mean. It lasts for years. I mean, unless you're going to use the ostrich plugged in all the time that you know, Moats himself said was not recommended, then you might have an issue there, but whatever. Anyway, so here it is. Just a tiny little board. Now, if I was going to assume how this thing's installed, if you have a chipped OBD1 ECU where your SST chip would go, I believe there's going to be a point opposite of this board that plugs, you know, that goes directly into it. And then you can see here this this cord that goes into this little chip, or not chip, this little board right here that goes into the CN2 port for data logging and you know real time, right here data log for real time feedback. So same thing, kind of like where you would plug in your Q log. So, yep, there's that. Uh, I wish it showed the price. I know it wasn't anything crazy. Here, I'll go back real quick. 
But yeah, two hundred dollars, and then this is a cool. Uh, if you guys wanted to go to uh, Coil on Plug and get rid of your distributor, they offer a good solution for that as well. All right, moving on, Cobra RTP. Now between the two, uh, this is probably what I would go with. Now unfortunately, they they are out of stock right now, but they do they are taking pre-orders, um, and the pricing of it is crazy too. So with no without Bluetooth, with Bluetooth, under two hundred bucks, like you can't beat that. Um, and pre-order again. It sucks. It's not it's not in stock, but just remember, Moat is no longer a company. These two companies are the only ones that I've found that offer a tuning capability for you know chipped OBD1 ECU. So keep that in mind. Here's the board. Now the reason why I said what I said about the Snake uh, EMU is because of this right here. I believe. It has a, something similar on the opposite side to where it would plug in where your chip would go into. And then you can see that cord right there. The green and yellow goes into your CN2 port. I do not know where that cord goes to because I believe that part right here is actually the USB or you know where it would go for your via the chip to the computer. So again, you know, come Bluetooth. Ability to download two firmware dual map. Oh, cool. So you can switch maps. That's an option. Again, no battery needed. Compatible with USDM, EDM, JDM case. Comes with a board, data logger, auxiliary cable, and ooh, a sticker. That's what you're really getting it for <laughs> right there. All right. Moving on to standalone. So, if you guys have seen the Humble Performance video, I believe Kenny is his name, where he did the comparison of Hondata S300 to the Haltech Elite 550. By the, at that time, it made sense. Like Haltech, in my personal opinion, was a no-brainer. Oh, you know, unless you had Hondata, then whatever, I didn't, so I probably would have benefited going for the Haltech Elite 550. Um, unfortunately, they discontinued the 550 very quick, very early on from its release. I believe it had, if I was to make a guess why, they did release it during the shipping crisis and a little post, you know, COVID and all that crap. So I wouldn't doubt that's reasoning why. The Haltech Elite's pretty cool, mostly because uh, as far as Hondas are concerned, it's they come pretty like um, plug and play ready for them. And what I mean by that is here's the ECU. Here's the adapter harness for OBD1 B series. And you can put this in any chassis and you're good to go. Wiring, it just, you know, it's a no brainer. So that's pretty cool. So that's the reason that, you know, would you be, are you gonna be paying more? Yes, unfortunately. But remember like wiring, wiring it's gonna be easier, especially for those that are not experienced in wiring at all. Um, and you can put this in any chassis you want. Moving on to the next one. Between the two, as of right now, this what this is what um, has me sold if I was going to go full standalone. So under a thousand bucks, this entire thing is the ECU, touch screen and all, and you can put it anywhere, and it'll work on anything. I believe this is like in a sand rail or something. But uh, if you guys don't follow Hunter Tuned, you guys really need to follow Hunter Tuned. He installed one of these things on a Honda Grom and tuned a Grom on one of these. <laughs> so. The only downfall as far as if you want to stick with everything fuel tech is, so if you were to get the universal harness, yeah, you're gonna be paying 1600 bucks. So about a hundred bucks, right, right? No, you're gonna be paying about the same price. No, never mind. no. Well, yeah, give or take, you'll be paying about the same price as the Haltech ECU with its harness as well. If you were to go, and so here's the crazy thing. That's with the universal harness. So that's not already, you know, pre-terminated like this is. It's not plug and play. Like you still gotta wire in everything yourself. Um, I mean, these things do come terminated with their own plugs and stuff. Show you guys that right here. But you may need to change out some of these plugs depending on like, you know, what, for example, um, what uh, O2 sensor you're using, what fuel, um, fuel injectors you're using i mean granted they do make adapter harnesses for it but again that's just more money you're gonna have to do unless you know what you're doing and you are a wiring guru 
then it shouldn't be a problem for you. It'll be obviously the wiring portion of installing these things is going to be a lot cheaper. Um, so since I said Fuel Tech doesn't make a complete plug and play for their ECUs to a Honda, you know, engine harness, Boomslang does. You know, if you guys have been following my channel for a long time, or just been following my channel and actually been watching my videos. Uh, Boomslang is the only company that makes an OBD0 to OBD1 conversion harness for the third generation fuel injected Accords. So it's pretty cool that I actually came across them again, seeing how they actually make fuel tech harnesses that are plug and play to specific models. So I already did one right here. So Acura 92, so that's gonna be OBD1 year, Integra manual, fuel tech 550, 700 bucks. So for 1700 bucks, you have, so if you think about this, so 1250, or sorry, 12, 1250, huh, 1205 plus the 560. So you're looking a little bit over seven, you know, about 1700, near 1800, depending on tax and stuff. Thousand bucks for the ECU, that is touchscreen. Plus 700 bucks. So for 1700 bucks, so about the same ballpark as the Haltech Elite, you're going to be getting a standalone ECU that's with a screen, touch screen, plug and play harness to OBD1. Like, that's a cool, that's, that's a win. Like, if I was going to go standalone with a standalone system right now, what's available now, this is what, ha this is what has me one right here. Now, the only thing is I have not found really good like step-by-step -step videos specifically with Hondas, like with you know B-Series, K-Series or whatnot, as far as like tuning or base map building with fuel tech. I think Evan, I think Evan's tuning is the only one that's done that. But as far as like finding like how to get your car started, building a base map, there's a lot of good videos, Honda specific from Haltech that's on there. I believe even in the Haltech programs, there's even like Honda base maps already in the program itself. Fuel Tech, I'm not sure they have that on there. I could be wrong. You know, as time goes on, it might receive updates to where that could be a possibility. So keep that in mind. Again, if you're gonna be taking your if you're gonna be installing this, taking it to a reputable tuner, then obviously that's not something you have to worry about. Alright, lastly, uh link ECU. So this thing is super neat. Actually, I should have put this uh, along with the uh, chipped ECU on the budget side. But so the cool thing about these are is exactly as you see them. So the Civic Link HC92X. So this means this is going to be for the OBD1, 92 to 95 engines. You literally open up your ECU case, take out the board out of it, and put that in there. Plug in your OBD1 uh, harness cables into this. Good to go. That's it. That's all you need. Um, I've actually kind of messed around. I downloaded their uh, tuning program that's specific for whatever, because they do make standalones. But, um, well, like, how should I say this? Other units, but depending on what unit you get, you got to download the corresponding program for it to be able to tune for it. There are a handful of good how to's on how to get it set up. Uh, Evan's tuning again. He does great uh, long form videos of how to get set up on, using Link. It, it's a pretty, it's pretty cool. I messed with it for a little bit. Um, a lot different than HTS, but um, knowing what you're what you're looking for, and knowing what you need to set up, it's all there. It makes it take some time. If there's anything else I missed, please leave it down in the comments below for not only myself but for the other viewers watching this video to you know see and further explore to see what other uh, tuning you know capabilities there are for the for our Hondas. Um, I know I'm forgetting one. I think it's like Speed Arduino or something like that. And who knows? There may be more out there. So yeah, throw them down in the comments below. Hopefully this helps you guys. You know, again, time is moving on. Companies are going under. Technology is improving. But you know, again, like we, most of us got in the Honda world. You know mostly and built you know, choosing to build them at least from one of the reasons so why i got into it besides just my love for hondas it's just uh how much you can create on a budget obviously times are changing and that's not being you know as true as it was before five ten years ago but hopefully all this stuff i'm showing you guys here helps and kind of keeps it within that budget friendly build 
So again, guys, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.